Now to Chicago in night three of the Democratic National Convention. Tim Walz is officially the vice presidential nominee for the Democratic Party. The Minnesota governor was relatively unknown until just a few weeks ago. He's used the stage to introduce himself to the nation, highlighting his service in the Army, National Guard, and leading into his teaching and coaching days as he rallies for Kamala Harris. It's the fourth quarter. We're down a field goal but we're on offense and we've got the ball. We're driving down the field. And boy, do we have the right team. Kamala Harris is top. Kamala Harris is experienced and Kamala Harris is ready. Harris will close out the DNC with her Democratic nomination acceptance speech today. Former President Bill Clinton took the stage in Chicago to speak on former President Donald Trump. Now let's cut to the chase. I am too old to gild the lily. <laughs> Two days ago, I turned 78, the oldest man in my family of four generations. And the only personal vanity I want to assert is I'm still younger than Donald Trump. Clinton also highlighted Vice President Harris, painting her as a champion of the working class and toting her campaign promises for more affordable housing. Clinton's speech marks his 12th at the DNC. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi urging voters to support Harris and Walls at the DNC. We must choose leaders who believe in free and fair elections, who respect the peaceful transfer of power. The choice couldn't be clearer. Those leaders are Vice President Harris and Governor Walls. The recent boost in enthusiasm for the Democratic ticket is in part thanks to Pelosi and her efforts at convincing President Joe Biden to drop out of the race. Pelosi downplayed her role, though she did tell reporters this month that she did what was, quote, necessary to stop Trump. Biden, meanwhile, says it was his decision and says he hasn't spoken to Pelosi since he ended his campaign last month. Now, the DNC is receiving quite a boost from star power this week. That includes Oprah on the stage, the television icon and media mogul called on fellow independents and undecided voters to consider values and character at the polls, saying, quote, Harris and Walls will deliver. And more than anything, you know this is true. The decency and respect are on the ballot in 2024. Oprah's speech also mentioned Trump. She spoke on what she calls ridiculous tweets, as well as Vance's comments on childless cat ladies. She says it's, quote, time to choose common sense over nonsense. And Democrats are turning to Republicans to sway members of their own party. Let me be clear to my Republican friends at home watching. If you vote for Kamala Harris in 2024, you're not a Democrat, you're a patriot. Jeff Duncan is the former lieutenant governor of Georgia. Now, Duncan sided with Georgia's governor in 2020, withstanding a pressure campaign to certify the election results in Trump's favor. He's just one of several Republicans rebuking former President Trump at the DNC. Duncan called him a, quote, felonist thug. He praised Harris's skills as a prosecutor, but says he doesn't agree with everything she says. Now, Trump may soon have a, a new high-profile supporter. Sources say RFK Jr. may exit the race and throw his support behind Trump. ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports on Trump's first outdoor rally since surviving an attempt on his life. This morning, Donald Trump holding his first outdoor event since the attempt on his life in Pennsylvania. Thank you very much, everybody. Former president speaking to supporters from behind bulletproof glass, surrounded by counter snipers, as he discussed national security. Trump also carved about former President Obama after he delivered a takedown at the DNC. He was taking shots at your president. And so was Michelle. And I try and be nice to people, you know, but it's a little tough when they get personal. Trump has spent more than a decade attacking Obama, including falsely questioning whether he was born in the United States. 
and Trump could soon have a new supporter. Multiple sources tell ABC News that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. plans to abandon his presidential campaign and endorse Trump as early as this week, but that endorsement would come with a price. Insiders say he would require a position in a Trump administration, a move Donald Trump Jr. seemed open to. I love the idea. I love the idea of you know giving him you know some sort of role in some sort of you know major uh, you know three letter entity or whatever it may be and let him blow it up. Kennedy reached out to both campaigns with the same offer. But we know that RFK reached out to try to get a meeting with Harris. He wanted to talk to her about getting a place in her cabinet in exchange for his endorsement, uh, and uh, we know that that went nowhere. But polls show Trump would not benefit from all Kennedy voters. It's interesting, Kamala Harris actually gets more Kennedy voters than Donald Trump does, but the biggest number overall is actually someone else entirely.